a story born a hundred years ago of a noble man whose life is worth reliving and looking back to. He's the only president with a national strategy. You'd think that uh, Marcos uh, was the bogeyman, uh, etc. But he was actually a very kind uh, person. The way that the Marcos has promoted the country, promoted the Filipino, is something I think that cannot be equal in any administration. His story speaks of the great Filipino dream, a father of a nation, in conquest for absolute freedom, true justice and real democracy for the Filipinos. The great slogan that he followed was he wanted this nation to be great again. He was the one who, who uh, was actually seeking for an independent foreign policy out of the ambit, out of the axis of the United States. It was President Marcos who declared for the first time what is now known as the Kalayan Group of Islands as subject to the sovereignty of the Philippines. The uh, president also wanted a negotiation with the United States about the termination of parity in 1974. Yung, yung ginawa ni President Park Chung-hee sa my Korea ay yung strategy ni President Marcos na ang pinakamataas na level of development ng Pilipinas over the last 50 years ay uh, inong panahon ni President Marcos, specifically during the earlier years of martial law. His story is a story of wisdom and goodwill. A story of a visionary leader with a strong political will who realized the Filipino potential and propelled the nation to progress. Mr. Marcos provided a lot more impetus in creating uh, programs of government that meant uh, building of uh, infrastructure in a very essential way. All these things went, moved forward in his time, very rapidly in the four years that he was in charge. Because that's the whole history of the energy policy. And that energy policy is being followed now. Agriculture, you should, I mean, look what Manny Pinol is doing. He's following Masagana 99, diba? Okay, Marcos yun eh. His story is a story of character. A war veteran who went to Bataan and picked up some soil and put it in a ziplock and sent it to you. Kinuha niya. Alam mo nung pagkakuha niya, tumalikod sa akin, bumalik sa kwarto, tapos nakikita ko na lang yung kanyang shoulders. Mga ganun, umiiyak. Minsan, hindi ko nakita magalit. Pag medyo may problem, may crisis doon sa Makiki, Tawagin niyo si Father, magsisimba na lang tayo. Pag may mga balita, di minsan hindi ko nakita nagmura against the government. Basta tulungan na lang natin. Ganun. Isang malaking injustice kung mananatili sa isip ng marami na si Ferdinand hindi nagmahal sa bayan. He loved this country so much that he was willing to sacrifice the presidency when he could have definitely attacked the people there at EDSA. A story of a strong man whose life was reduced by a chapter of our history. I have uh, proclaimed martial law in accordance with the powers vested in the president by the constitution. Of the martial law to solve yung communist insurgency, tsaka yung Muslim secessionism. Yung kaguluhan na yun, hindi naman si uh, President Ferdinand Marcos ang nagdala on dahilan ng mga kaguluhan. It was a phase when it was hip, uso, ang lumaban sa gobyerno. A story born a hundred years ago about life, leadership, and legacy waiting to be retold. Si Marcos talaga really made a mark in who we are in, uh, in international. But if you compare what he did for our country during the time he was president, no one should ever be sorry that we had Marcos for a person. Kung ikumpara mo yung good points ni Marcos at saka yung good points ng ibang naging presidente natin mula sa kalintinan yung iba. Uh, since the Marcos administration, I don't know, have you really gotten off the ground? Only history can rightfully judge President Marcos. This is history. This is the story of Marcos.
Marcos 100.